So this is the rest of the urinary system. After the kidneys, uh, the pelvis of the kidney is continuous with uh, a tube that runs down to the bladder called the ureter, one for each kidney. Uh, and their job is to convey urine, to carry urine from the kidneys down to the bladder. Um, they're found retroperitoneally. They're, they are behind the, the peritoneum, behind the serosa, the parietal uh, serous membrane of the abdomen. And um, they pass down behind the bladder and they, they enter the bladder from the bottom uh, where that part of the bladder is also retroperitoneal. The top part of the bladder is in the cavity, but the bottom part of the bladder is anchored. And so this retroperitoneal tube enters the part of the bladder that isn't free to move so that it's stable and doesn't rip or damage the tube. Um, it also acts as a valve. When the, when the bladder fills, uh, it presses down on the ureter passing behind and beneath it and pinches it and uh, so it prevents urine especially when you start to urinate it prevents the urine from going back up the ureters towards the kidneys and instead it goes up the urethra. Um, the ureters are like a lot of the tubes in the body, like arteries or the digestive tubes, the alimentary canal, etc., uh, in that there's three walls. Um, there's a lining, and it's an epithelial lining, a mucosa, as it were. Uh, uh, it tends to have transitional epithelium um, through the, most of the length of it. Um, there's a muscularis which is smooth muscle and it's got two layers in it and the outer layer is an adventitia uh, it's fibrous connective tissue it's not a serosa because it's not found in the cavity because it's retroperitoneal it has a, an adventitia um, the muscularis is there because urine actually moves through these tubes um, by peristalsis that way urine it doesn't depend on gravity to get to the bladder the, the urine is made in the nephrons and the collecting ducts it drips into the um, minor calyx uh, and then the major calyx down to the renal pelvis then from the renal pelvis into the ureters and then by peristalsis it moves into the bladder um, if you have kidney stones, this is where you get the pain when the stones move into, into the ureters. So the ureter it ends up in the bladder. Um, and the, the bladder is really the lumen of the bladder. The lumen of the ureter is already outside of your body. So it's all over but the peeing. Uh, at this point. You don't reabsorb anything in these tubes. Um, the, the bladder is on the pelvic floor. It's just behind the, the pubic symphysis and it is found mostly retroperitoneally. Um, the, the top of it uh, extends into the cavity. The bottom part is fixed. Um, the uh, in men, the prostate gland is right on the underside. Uh, in women, uh, it's found in, in front of the vagina and the uterus. The whole bladder, the inside of the bladder, is very wrinkly because it, it has to expand quite a bit. But there is one area between the, uh, the two openings for the two ureters and the one opening for the urethra where the, where the tissue is actually very smooth. And it forms this triangle, and that's called the trigone. Um, 
a lot of times when people have bladder infections, the infections are, are found here uh, just because of the, the nature of the, uh, that this tissue doesn't move. And so it's uh, kind of hard to evacuate uh, any bacteria or anything that are in there. Um, so the bladder has like the, this trigone, the, probably the most important aspect of it. Other than that, the walls of the bladder uh, have this epithelium, um, so uh, a mucosa, and they have um, this layer, smooth muscle layer, called the detrusor muscle. Uh, now, it's three layers thick, so there's an oblique layer, just like the stomach. Um, it has an adventitia on the inferior side and peritoneum on the uh, superior side of, of the bladder. So uh, the folds in, in the bladder, everywhere but the trigon, are called rugae. Uh, and they disappear as the bladder fills. It, it allows it uh, to expand like an accordion. And that way the pressure doesn't significantly go up. The wrinkles just disappear. So when we look at a at a picture of it, you can see that there's the rugae. This is the trigone. These are the openings to the uh, ureters. The ureter you see comes down behind and underneath, and empties in to the bladder of the trigone. The um, the opening to the urethra is here. Now there is a couple of sphincters. One is called the internal urethral sphincter. Uh, and the other one is the external urethral sphincter. The internal urethral sphincter is really uh, smooth muscle. So it's not voluntary and it's closed most of the time, except when it's triggered to urinate. The external urethral sphincter is skeletal muscle and it is completely voluntary. Uh, so this is uh, a female, so the urethra is very short um, in men it's much longer it's it passes through the prostate then through the uh, the the diaphragm uh the urogenital diaphragm, and then through the length of the spen the penis it's called the spongy urethra at that point um so the distance between the internal and the external uh, urethral sphincter in men is far longer than in women. Um, the urethra itself is a muscular tube. Uh, it has pseudostratified uh, epithelium. It has some transitional epithelium near the bladder because there's transitional epithelium in the bladder. Uh, so it... Um, it ends up there. By the time we get to the external orifice, it's a stratified squamous epithelium. I've already said that the internal sphincter is smooth muscle, uh, and it is normally closed, and it it opens like the when it is stimulated, so it really contracts to open. The external voluntary uh, sphincter is uh, really about the muscles of the pelvic floor, and it, it, it's entirely voluntary. Female urethra is only uh, three or four centimeters long, only a couple of inches long. Its uh, anterior vaginal wall is where we find it. It's it's attached to the anterior vaginal wall. Um, and the uh, opening is into the vestibule, uh, the vestibular area. It's, um, you know, we've seen this picture, it's, it's just like that. Um, you'll also note in this picture that this is peritoneum down here would be adventitia because there's other tissues here. 
The male urethra serves both the reproductive and urinary systems. Uh, it carries semen and urine, depending on timing. Uh, there's the prostatic urea, urethra uh, that's found within the prostate. There's the membranous urethra, which is really analogous to the female urethra. It passes through the urogenital diaphragm and the spongy urethra that, that's the length of the penis. Uh, it ends up looking like this. So, like I said, the internal uh, sphincter and the external sphincter are a little further apart in men. Uh, so, when the bladder fills with urine, uh, you're prompted to urinate, and that's called micturation, voiding. Uh, so, what happens here is the detrusor muscle starts to contract, building up pressure within the um, the bladder. And this is an autonomic uh, thing. Uh, the internal urethral sphincter also opens, again, autonomic. You, most people uh, then voluntarily close the external urethral opening uh, just to to make it to the toilet or to make it to the bush or wherever you're going to pee uh, and then you relax and you open that external sphincter and then voiding starts so um, so really it's uh, a parasympathetic so uh, that causes contraction of the detrusor and it causes the opening of the internal sphincter. Uh, in babies, the, this inhibits the somatic pathways uh, and in adults, we overcome the somatic thing. Um, I'm not worried about the pontine centers or anything like that. The, the point is that it is a um, a parasympathetic uh, control over the detrusor and the internal sphincter and its somatic control over the external sphincter.